everybody, it's Mary, Stamps and Lingers. It's just about 7 o'clock, so I thought I'd go ahead and hit the live button. I can see some folks on. Hi, Sandra and Marva and Jean. I appreciate you guys coming. And yes, I concur, it so is cold. Here, it is 25 degrees already at 7 o'clock at night in Georgia. So, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely winter. I hope you all are staying inside and staying warm. Um, Finn and I went out a couple of times today. We went to the mailbox a couple of times. He doesn't understand cold because he's not cold. He's like, I love this, Mom. What in the world is your problem? Why am I standing here waiting for you to put 17 layers of clothes on? He doesn't get it. And the pony is very happy, too. She loves it. So um, she's in her warm barn, and warm is relative. I've got all the doors closed, so it's uh, there's no wind chill in there. So she's very comfortable. So let us take a look at a card that is, um, well, it's wishful thinking. It could be spring. We have a lot of dogwoods here in Georgia and certainly many on our property. And they are one of my very favorite trees. They are just gorgeous. Um, and so I was very happy to see this detailed dogwood stamp set, which is one of the free goodies in the celebration catalog, which is pretty darned awesome. So between now and the end of February, you can get this set free with a $100 purchase, you know, before shipping and tax, that doesn't count. But it's beautiful and I think you're gonna enjoy it. And I've used it here on this really very simple, uh, I showed it to a friend of mine and she's like, yeah, but where's the linen thread and the 17 layers? <laughs> I said, yeah, I know, I don't know what happened, it was weird. But it's in gray and yellow and um, it uses some doodling. Somebody mentioned the other day they hadn't seen any doodling for a minute, so I thought, well, I'll do a little, I'll do a little doodling, how about that? And then on the inside, just the um, same image again, stamped in gray. So very simple. Now it is a sentiment or a, an image only set, which means you're going to need a sentiment to go with. And I've picked um, thanks from the Biggest Wish set. And Biggest Wish is, of course, in the annual catalog. So you can purchase this, and then add a few things to it, and get the detailed dogwood for free. Hello, everybody! I appreciate you guys joining and spending part of your evening with me. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, we also use the deckled rectangles to make our mat. And it's actually this one. Now I'm calling this, I called this the third from the largest. So there's first from the largest, second from the largest, third from the largest. That's the one that I've used on this card. Okay, so now you know which it is when you see it on the directions tomorrow, which will all be on my blog. All right, so here is the easiest way to make this little um, this little card, this little card right here. Okay. And I'm going to use sticky notes. You can use whatever you like. You are going to want to, um, temporarily secure your card front. So this is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. You're going to want to temporarily secure it to your work surface. So I'm just using sticky notes and I'm going to go ahead and use it on all four corners because I really don't want it to move. Once I get my window in place. I want it to stay in place. So I'm generous with my sticky notes. Hello, Alicia. Appreciate you coming. I'm sure it's pretty chilly in Ohio as well. Now to make a mask, the easiest way to make a mask is to use a card front size piece of cardstock. All right. So it's the exact same size as your card front, which means if you just line it up right over the top of the card front, you're going to be good to go. It's going to be in the same place on your card front as it is in your mask. Okay? So all I did is I used that third from the largest deckled rectangle to cut out from the middle of a piece of um, basic white. It really doesn't matter what color cardstock you use because you're just going to put some ink all over it. I will say that basic white is nice and thin, so it really lets you, it kind of helps to negate any little... Um, Oh, you know, extra little halos around the edges of the cardstock. All right. So just want it to be straight on there. And you do want to take the time to get this lined up correctly because it, it really is kind of the basis for where your image is going to be. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you, I did try this with a piece of window sheet and it worked very nicely. It was very easy to see what I was doing. 
but it was a little harder to line things up because I was having a hard time seeing the window sheet, if that makes sense. Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Jeanette and Beth. Appreciate you. Hi, Lenny. All right. So as you can see, I am not skimping on my sticky notes. All right. Now, with that all in place, as you would imagine, you can't see any edges. If you can see any edges, you want to be sure that you've got them lined up. So I'm good to go. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight ink pad and a blending brush. Now, I am going to start, when you use a blending brush, it's best you really kind of want to start off of your main card stock so that you get any blotches kind of out of the way, okay? And then you can kind of start putting your, rolling your ink on. Now, I wanted this to have some darker, almost splotchy areas in, okay? Because I'm, that's another layer of texture. You know, when you cook, they say you layer on your spices, right? So when you are cooking pasta, you start by putting salt in the boiling water, and then you maybe put some more salt in after you've put the pasta in, and then you would perhaps season or salt the pasta when it comes out. You have to build that level of spice, and that's the same with color. You don't want to go crazy because you can always add color. But what I'm doing here is adding another layer of texture with this brushing on. Okay, that's why I'm not getting real head up if it's if there's a little blotch. In fact, I, I almost want a little blotch, okay? Because that, my hand just went crazy. I don't know what it was doing right there. I have no idea. I'm not sure freezing in Texas can be used in the same. Well, actually, it can be. I have been so cold in Texas, I thought I was going to die. And then there was this rainy sleet stuff coming out of the sky. It was truly miserable. So the same was true in Northern California. I didn't think I could be cold in Northern California. And I can remember being so cold there again. I thought I was just going to croak. So... Okay, now can you see that I'm actually adding some darker areas in? Okay, another layer of texture without adding any layers of anything. Okay, now I am happy with that. So now I'm going to take a couple of images from the detailed dogwood. The first I'm going to start with is this little flower guy. So it's this one right here. And I am going to stamp it kind of randomly all over in Stamped Off Once, Daffodil Delight. Now, here's a deal that you can know. You're gonna get a little halo. Can you see right there that that didn't really um, make a good impression? You only get a first impression one time, right? <laughs> little joke. But it really doesn't matter. Um, if you were using full strength ink, you'd be able to see it a lot better. But with the stamped off ones, it kind of disappears into the into the background, if you will. Thank you, Jeanette. Now, I'm going to do the same color combination. I'm going to use stamped off once Daffodil Delight with this leaf image. Again, it's from Detailed Dogwood. All of my images, just so I don't have to bore you by going, and this is from Detailed Dogwood. They're all from Detailed Dogwood, okay? So I'm going to stamp off once. That didn't work out good. Gonna stamp off once and then stamp this. Again, it's not like you're going, oh, look, there's a leaf image. It's just added texture to the background of your card front. Okay, all that said, I do still turn the stamp around when I'm stamping. And let's see, I'm gonna do one more. And you know what, too, you could, if you wanted, Use this uh, dragonfly. In fact, let's do that. Oh, what the heck. What the heck. Let's add the dragonfly in because he's cute. I like the dragonfly. And I'm going to do him. I mean, Let's do him in the next color, which is crushed curry. So, again, when you stamp it off, it's not going to be like, oh, wow, look at that. She used two different kinds of yellow. It's not going to be that way. You aren't looking for that. You're looking for fun and pretty okay and I'm just gonna do this a couple of three times like 
like that. Okay. And then the final image is going to be this little uh, square flirty duty. And it's going to also be in Stamped Off Lens Crushed Curry. And you're really, it almost looks like, um, it almost ends up looking kind of like twall when you get done with it. Not, I mean, not really, but it's, um, it made me think that when I looked at it. Okay, there we are. One, it's one degree. Oh, that's not even, that's terrible. No, dear, that's not good. Okay, so you've got everything done. You've got all your stamping done. So now we'll just pick up the mask. And there you go. Just like that. And you can save that mask and use it for another card. That ink will dry on it and you'll be just fine using it on a separate card. Okay, so I'm gonna cover this up. Now, next up, I'm gonna take some Smoky Slate. Hey, Julia. Julie, how are you? Now, I'm gonna take Smoky Slate and I'm gonna use this big image from Detailed Dogwood. I'm going to ink it up real good. And I'm going to stamp it. And you want it to come off of the side, out of, out of that stamped area. You want it to come out of the stamped area. Okay? All right. Now, I will keep my ink pad open because I'm going to use it to help color my, my image. I've got a blender pen, and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap in the ink pad and then wipe it off on my scrap because I want, I can always add ink, right? It's much harder to take it off. So all I'm doing is using the shade marks that Stampin' Up! has given me to deepen the color of this flower. All right. And I apologize ahead of time. This is probably going to take a minute. But actually, that'll give me a chance to remind you that we have one heck of a joining special right now. So if you have any interest in joining Stampin' Up! and making that 20 to 25% discount available to you, this is a great time to do it. You can first off pick to purchase with your starter kit. You can add a free glass mat studio, or you can add an additional $30 in product. So what's the deal? You pay your $99. Either way, you pay your $99 plus tax. You get free shipping on your kit and your extra goodies as well, obviously. And you pick $125 worth of product, whatever kind you want. We're not one of those companies that say, and here's your special kit. This is what you got to have. You pick whatever you want. And then you either pick the Glass Mat Studio to add for free, about a $60 value. Or you add, if you don't want a glass mat, and not everybody does. They're, they're not for everybody. Um, if you don't want that, you can pick an additional $30 in free Stampin' Up! product. And now everybody wants that. Everybody does. And the cool thing is, is as soon as you have done that and joined Stampin' Up! as a demonstrator, then you will get your 20% discount on anything that you purchase. So, let's take that another step while I'm coloring. If you decide, for example, that you wanted this dogwood set, you can't get celebration items when you purchase your, your kit, okay? But the very next order, you can do it the same day. You know, sign up in the morning and in the afternoon, place your first demonstrator order, usually. usually I mean, not always. Occasionally, there's a little delay, but not, not usually. So you could place your next order... And let's say you spent, you got $200 worth of retail items. First off, you're only going to spend $160 because you're going to get your 20% discount. And you're still going to be able to get either four $50 celebration items or a $100 celebration item like detailed dogwood and two fifties or $200 items. So you still get that. The thing that I think people sometimes don't remember is that demonstrators get the same customer benefits that customers get. So if there's a sale for customers, Stampin' Up! demonstrators get that same sale, but they also get their discount. 
How cool is that? And the other thing is, if you're thinking, oh, but Mary, I can't possibly be a, a demonstrator. I couldn't make that $300 every quarter. No, I couldn't do it. Well, a couple of things to remember. First off, it's $300 in retail, so you're going to pay $240, 20% off, right? $300 minus $60, okay? So you're going to only pay $240 and get credit from the company for $300, and the second one is, is if after however long, one quarter, you decide this just isn't for me, I just can't do it, you just walk away. I mean, I don't want you to do that. I would love for you to stay on the team, but I'm, I'm not going to send Guido to your house to break your knees or, you know, even, even look scary and threatening at your door. No, nope. you just walk away and say goodbye and hopefully go back to being my customer. But you don't even have to do that. Okay, so I'm almost there. I'm just getting these last little um, leaves done. Anyway, I would love to have you on the team. We call ourselves the Critters and Creating Crew. We all decided, we voted on that a long time ago, came up with the idea for that. Why? Because we all seem to like animals. The whole team seems to like animals. We are all over the country, so if you're not in Georgia, that's okay. Most of my folks aren't in Georgia. Let's see, Shirley's on, she's in Georgia. Um, Karen Finkel is in Tennessee. She used to be, she was in Florida when she started, but all over the country works good. Thank goodness for Zoom. It's one of the unintended good things that came out of COVID-19 was we all got really good with Zoom. And so we meet once a month on Zoom and we have a very good time. And we have prize patrols and all sorts of stuff. And we have a private Facebook group. So it's not like the real Facebook where just anybody can kind of see what you're doing. It's just us. You have to be a member of our team to be on there. And we share our projects and we have um, contests or challenges, I guess I should say. Like, for example, in January, we're all trying to make cards that have flowers on them, which is pretty easy. Everybody wants to make flowers. And you will get entered in for every time you post a project on our team Facebook page you'll get entered into a drawing at the end of the month. And three people get to pick a stamp set up to $25. So we, like I said, we have a good time and we support each other well. And I can tell you that m most of the folks on our team and Suzette and Shirley and Karen, you can attest to that. We have, a, we have some business demonstrators who are actively pursuing a business like I am. And we have a lot of folks that wanted the fun and the product and the discount and we call those hobby demonstrators and we all have a very good time together okay so let's see i think that's about right so now what i'm going to go ahead and do is put this away you also there is it is it is okay it is cold down there when it's cold you get your your blood thins i know that sounds like really that sounds like everybody's thing, but it's true. Okay, now, I have my sentiment with, uh, see how pretty that turned out? Just a little bit of extra definition. What is that? I guess it must be a eraser thing. Just a little bit of extra shading in there to, to make that pop just the tiniest bit. So now I'm gonna take my sentiment from Biggest Wish and there you go, Shirley, don't be like like Shirley and wait forever, get that discount. There, there, there's truly no downside. I mean, that's the thing that kills me is there's truly, there's no downside. I can counter every yeah, but I can. Okay, so we're gonna stamp thanks in basic gray and I wanna get it to where I do it sort of straight. You know, the most embarrassing thing almost for anybody is <laughs> making a crooked, crooked stamp with a photopolymer stamp. Okay, I'm going to stamp this and I'm gonna stop saying that because right about now is when I'll go crooked on it. I'm gonna stamp that right there like that. Still gray, but now, oh, thank you guys. You guys are sweet. All right, now the next, last thing I'm gonna do for the card front is I'm gonna take the um, fine end of my Smoky Slate stamp and Write marker and we're gonna do a little doodling and doodles are pretty easy. I'm just going to do a little dot and a little, a little wiggle. 
a dot and a wiggle and a dot and a wiggle and a dot and a wiggle like that and I'm going right inside the uh, edge of the of the colored area okay and it's not very hard and it is not very precise I always figure if somebody wants to really look close at my doodles, they're going to find that they're not at all the same. They're not as different as they should be. They're not curvy all the same. They're far from perfect. So when I get down here, I'm going to go ahead and put that one in the middle there and a little dot, and then I'm going to continue it on around like that. So don't don't be expecting perfect doodles because doodles almost by default are not perfect. And sometimes you're going to think, gosh, I don't know, should I put a doodle in there or should I have left it blank? And you're going to be like, I don't know, man. I just don't know. So, you know, it's art. It's not going to be perfect, is it? Okay. And there's my doodles. Now, the last thing I'm going to add, boom, if I can find them. Here we go. Could I trace the die? Um, you sure could. You could if that's what you wanted. Um, it is a little bit rough and bumpy, so you might not get the look you wanted, which means practice it on your scrap paper first. You might want to try that first, all right? Personally, I kind of like it being imperfect. That, that's what I, I am, that's what I want from my doodles is for them to be imperfect. Okay, now I'm going to take a couple of the Lemon Lolly. Um, these are the adhesive back solid gems. I love them. You get um, Copper Clay, Boho Blue, and Lemon Lolly. And I'm just going to put a couple of three of these on my card front. And I'm using the medium and smalls, not the big ones. I'm going to put a medium right there. And then I'm going to put a medium up here. And then I'm going to put a little one, I think, right there. Now, where you place them each time is going to depend on where you stamp your flower. So it might be a little different. You can see my two card fronts, while very similar, are just a little different because of the way I angled the flower. So it's going to be a little different each time, even when it looks exactly the same. So different and yet completely the same. Does it feel funny not to be called Colonel now? Um, no, not really. You know, we don't, my last job when I was, I was a contractor, so I wasn't a Colonel then. Um, they do, would still call me Colonel if I went onto a military base. Most of the time they would call me Colonel and I was a Lieutenant Colonel, but that would be what we'd call a phone Colonel. So you, you wouldn't say Lieutenant Colonel every single time you said your rank on the phone. And, but they would call me Lieutenant Colonel Bethridge when I, when I go through the base gate somewhere. But no, it really doesn't. I got used to it by spending 13 years as a contractor being called Mary. All right, so there's our card front. And on the inside, we're going to go real simple. And it's going to be the same simpleness as uh, on the envelope flap, or uh, well, yes, on the envelope and the envelope flap. I am going to now take this image and I'm gonna stamp it in basic gray, not smoky slate, so smoky slate on the front, basic gray on the inside. And I'm just going to put it right down here in the corner, like that. And I am not gonna color it, we're not coloring. Mm -mm. Nope, nope or not. And I'm going to go ahead and do this on the front of the envelope down in the left corner so that we don't give the postal people a stroke. And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's dry. Yep. I'm going to put it on my envelope flap. And when I do the flap, I want a little more of the image on it. So I'm going to turn it sideways and put the image on like that just like that so remember this is an option when you don't use a DSP and you don't have any any DSP associated with your card you could still decorate your envelope just go ahead and stamp 
the envelope flap as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this finished up. It's just a matter of assembling, and we'll be done, Ske. We'll be done, Ske. Yeah, for sure, Karen. You definitely want this stamp set. It is gorgeous. I always think when the uh, dogwoods bloom here, it's always after it's after the other trees have leafed back out usually, and so then they bloom and they they they're so white and bright in the green, the complete green background of the rest of our area that they it looks like I've put Christmas lights out in the forest. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I love them the best. Okay. And then we're going to do this. On, that's right. No naked envelopes. There you go. Another order to get that dogwood set. Absolutely. It's absolutely worth it. All right. And we're going to put it into our thick basic white card base. Now, if you wanted to, you could use a Daffodil Delight or a Lemon Lolly mat if you wanted. That would change up the look just a little bit. I considered that, and then I decided I, I kind of like the gray. Let me see if I can find some more white dimensionality. No. So we're going to use black. Oh, wait, there's some. I'll use white on the... Where's my card front? Oh, God. Golly, that's crazy. Did you see that? I couldn't. It was right in front of me. If that had been a snake, whoo, that would have been bad. All right, I'm just going to use black on the rest of it. That doesn't matter. Anybody who wants to get all hit about what colored dimensionals I used, jeez. Hopefully that none of the recipients of these cards will be like, I am checking to see if she used all the same color dimensionals all the way around. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Appreciate you. I, this is one of my favorite things. And you know, I, it was funny. I haven't done it in a minute, but the other day I got one of those things, you know, that pops up your memories on Facebook. And it was a card I had done a couple of years ago um, with a similar layout. And I thought, oh, that's a good one. And then I realized that the dogwood set would be perfect for it. There you go. And unlike many of my cards, I'm betting you can get away with just one regular stamp. So there you go, everybody. Detailed dogwood, free, with a $100 purchase through the 29th of February. You get an extra day because it's leap year. And don't forget the amazing Biggest Wish. These are designed to work together. So you have happy birthday, hello friend, hello friend. So you can mix and match the fonts. But don't forget, you've also got just single, single word greetings. Hello and thanks great. All right. I appreciate you guys joining. I hope you all stay warm. I know the whole universe is cold right now, or at least, you know, in the United States is. So stay warm, stay safe, have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you on Thursday for another Facebook video or YouTube video. Not Facebook. That's old news. That's the last decade. All right. We'll see you guys. Thanks so much. Ta.